Hey guys, welcome to this week's video, which was supposed to be last week's video, but a migraine struck me down on Sunday, so here we are this week. Thanks for coming back. This week I'll be doing a pretty simple extension, but I thought this would be a good opportunity to talk over some altering basics, uh, 101 if you will. So let's just uh, jump right into this, shall we? The first thing that I do whenever I begin to work on a card is to tape it off. And I do have some videos on that where you can watch that process, but honestly, I'll often cut that out of the full videos because it's a little tedious to do with the camera in the way. My face normally gets like right down close to it so I can see that clear tape edge lining up with the edge of the card. And that's, that's a little tricky to do with the camera sometimes. So please forgive me, but if you're interested in seeing that process, I will put a little tag to those videos in the corner. Part of the process that you'll frequently see on the cards that have a foil stamped name like this one or other ultra rares or secret rares is I'll put that little slip of paper between the tape and the name itself. And the reason I do that is because the tape will actually lift the foiling off of the name. I believe this is part of the reason that you'll find misprints with the indent but no foil be less valuable than the ones with no imprint. But anyway, uh, it will lift off that foil. So I always put that slip of paper in there to kind of help protect the name from being affected by the tape. And then once that's squared away, I can jump in with the acetone. But once you have your card all taped off, the next thing to do is to pull out a bottle of acetone or 100% nail polish remover. I normally find that just in like the beauty section of Walmart or Target or whatever your local drugstore is and you can normally get a pretty big bottle for just a couple bucks, it's not expensive, and a box of q-tips. I do recommend the uh, paper q-tips versus the ones that have like a plastic core or a wood core simply for the reason that I actually like to cut that tip off of the q-tip to make a more narrow point that's still uh, paper so that it'll absorb some acetone to get into more narrow crevices and you'll see me do that here later in a little bit But that's if you see suddenly the q-tip point is gone and it looks much thinner It's because I've snipped that head right off and re-dipped it in the acetone to get into those more detailed areas I think the thing that I've definitely put the most time into over the years working on and improving and still feel like I could improve on it from time to time is working around levels or ranks. Honestly, the only advice I can give you this on this is to just practice and take it slow because you can work on it for a solid 20 minutes and then you decide to rush it at the end and accidentally clip off one of those levels and it just is like the worst feeling because you're like, oh, I went so slow around all these others and now I done did this. Oh well. Um, you can always paint them back in if it's one of the older cards, but if it has the foil levels and ranks like the newer cards do, you might have a harder time fixing that. So just be careful. On a positive note, the newer cards, because it's printed as like the base layer of the card along with the monster art, kind of that, uh, that more transparent layer, it does um, lift a little more slowly than the exterior ink that's a little thicker. So it makes it a smidge easier to kind of allow the acetone to soak into that top layer and work around the levels that are transparent. So hopefully that helps you out. Once you've got your card completely stripped and you're ready to start going in with markers or paint, um, this one I actually didn't need to use any paint on because the entire artwork by Kazuki is completely contained in the middle and then just for the sake of this video I decided to go with a very simple pure black background. So very basic but I thought this would be Good for just kind of talking about some things to watch for. You may have noticed for a brief flicker there when I first got out the markers I was using a sharpie. The sharpie ink and the Bic ink, the blacks are just slightly different so I guess one advantage if you have the cash for it to have different marker sets is that you can color match better. Um, so I didn't end up actually going with the black uh, Bic on this one instead of the sharpie because it matched that little sliver of black that we left around the layer of the artwork. A bit better than the Sharpie Black did. And then the thinner point that I go in with around the levels is the uh, extra fine point of the Bic markers, which 
mine was almost out of ink, so I ended up having to switch back to my fat marker, but that's okay, because if you do end up having to overlap some of your levels a little bit, if you have a colorless blender, like from Copic or Prismacolor, or I think even Master of Stretch and some of the off-brands have them now, um, you can go in with one of those and kind of touch up any details that you need to to lift that marker ink off anywhere you don't want it to be. And then I normally just have a little scrap piece of paper off to the side so that as I'm cleaning that off, I can clean off the tip of my marker as I'm going over those levels. I do always find it super satisfying to go through and do the tape peel that first reveals the uh, like the text box at the bottom and the name box at the top and that crisp line. Oh, it looks so good. And then I'll take another couple of small pieces of tape and put them on the edges to keep those nice crisp lines. And again, I'll go in and kind of cut the Q-tip so that I can get down close to the eye of Anubis box without uh, lifting that hollow foil stamp. Because that's what tells someone it's a little bit of my card. It's a lot harder to reproduce that than some of the other things. And we're getting to be some pretty good Orica makers out there these days. And then once the rest of our layer is off, we'll go ahead and carry around that marker extension to the tops, bottoms, and sides of the card. Now, something that can happen when you peel off the tape is that you can realize, oh, the ink, despite my best efforts, managed to slip underneath the tape and that's often why you'll see me, it's, it's, it's bad when I don't have nails. Um, you'll sometimes see me intentionally with like one obnoxiously long nail just to use to kind of help press down that tape so that it keeps any ink gaps, any air gaps under the tape uh, to prevent the ink from sliding under there. But every now and then, even when you do take that precaution, it'll still get in there. And then you can just go in again with your colorless blender and try and clean it up a little bit. If for whatever reason it doesn't lift, then your neck, your last option is to kind of go in and either, you know, remove it with acetone, or if you, if it really bugs you, you can go in and you can just color match and paint over any spots that you aren't happy with. The downside with color matching the border is that you do get a slight texture difference compared to the rest of the card because of the paint. But for my personal preference, I think that visually it's nicer to have that matte gray solid border that goes around or you know, if it's in the name box or wherever you accidentally have to touch up, um, I think that having that max, the, the color matching is a better finished look than having a slight texture difference. But that's just my personal preference. You might have a different one for how you do your cards. And there we have it, the final result. Simple, clean, nice clean lines, solid color lay down. The nice thing about the alcohol-based markers is that they tend to kind of, you know, blend together for that nice solid flat color. And it's transparent ink, so that sparkle, the foil shines through and looks good. But yeah, that's the end result. I hope you enjoyed this little walkthrough together. If you have any questions, feel free to drop them in the comments and I'll do what I can to answer them and hopefully you learned something. If there's anything that you didn't know before that this video uh, gave you some help, uh, drop that in the comments too. I'd love to hear what was helpful. Thanks for watching and I will see you guys next time. Bye!